Hey y'all, it's Randy. I want to come on and try to do a craft with me. Notice I say try. Uh, I've never done this before and I just wanted to see how it would go because I kept feeling the nudge when I was doing this that I needed to record it. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to turn out, so I hope you guys will be very gentle with me <laughs> um, through this process and um, hopefully it will go smoothly and I'll probably do it in several little snippets. I haven't decided if I'm um, technical enough to be able to put them all together and do one long craft with me for the whole journal or if I just need to do it in um, sections and then upload and not worry about um, putting them all together because that might be really long anyway. So I'm working on this Bohemian journal that won't leave me alone in my head. Uh, I've really been trying to work on another journal that I have for a custom order and for some reason it will not let me do it. Um, and so to me in my mind that means it's not ready. And I know as artists all of you out there understand exactly what I'm talking about. You don't really want to do something if you're not feeling it, if it's not speaking to you, or if it's not turning out the way that you wanted. And for this specific journal, um, the owner has some very specific requests and it's making me think about things a lot different than just a normal journal and so I have something in my head and I just absolutely cannot get it out um in journal form so <laughs> I hope that person um she knows who she is will forgive me for taking so long but when I get it to her I want it to be right so this is my in-between journal um hopefully try and get myself moving again and I had already started on this um I had the papers ready and I just pulled some papers that were kind of bluey and greeny um I do kind of have somebody in mind for this journal when I started out but I'm I don't think I'm going to do that either because I do have another custom journal that um I need to be working on but I don't think this is it. This is not shaping up to be that one. So I think I'm going to skip on that one too. This one just wants to be made and it needs to be done a certain way. It won't let me do anything else. So um, these, it's going to be three small signatures, kind of traveler's notebook style or size. And so I left a lot of room for it to get chunky and have some extra space there as you can see it's probably three quarters to an inch maybe um so anyway i'll show you what i started with so this is a piece of upholstery fabric and i just loved that pattern there and i cut that out and then i cut another piece out um, trying to make sure that I got the pattern lined up in the middle of where I knew the book was going to fold. And then what I do when people send me something in the mail, if it's Tyvek or something that's strong or that I know that will work for how I like to do my covers, um, on my soft covers, then I'll use it in between here. In this case, it was um, a, a piece of Tyvek envelope. Uh, and I doubled it, you know, left it doubled like it was, and then put it inside of here and glued it down with some Fabri-Tac. I didn't go crazy with the Fabri-Tac because really I just needed it to stay adhered enough for me to sew around it, um, you know, so it would stay together. So I did several stitches on here. Actually, that's the back side. So let's flip that over. Um, just kind of experimenting at you know what looked best and it is a junk journal and you know I can do what I want to with it so I did lots of different things um, stitch wise and I left it I thought it uh, I thought it turned out nicely so I did the red accent because you know too much blue uh, although I love blue don't get me wrong and I know everybody loves blue um, 
it just needed something to pop and so I was getting together my supplies to do this and um, the red kept calling <laughs> and so when I pulled everything together um, I went through my boho fabrics or my Indian sari fabrics from Sheila from Boho Daydreams and pulled out some of her silks, some of her saris, some uh, some reds, lots of bl different blues, kind of an orangey color. And then I had some of this red, which I recently purchased. Uh, it's sticking to that. And um, it has some blue in it too, in, in different places. And so I wanted to use that. And... I have this little box of gems, like little plastic crafty gems, and the really cool thing about them is when you put them on something, if you can see that, when you put the glue on the back side of that, it looks just fabulous. It sparkles, it shines, it doesn't look like a cheap um, plastic jewel anymore, and I wanted to keep this light, you know, for the cover because I didn't want it to be over heavy or too big that when you open the journal you can't write on this side so that worked out really well that little plastic piece so what I what I started doing with that is um, initially I just had this little plastic piece and I kept thinking that I was gonna put it in on here somewhere you know and put a few on here maybe sew yeah, them on so. but it was just too big and so um, some of the papers that I have pulled together are Medieval Mirage. And um, I love her papers. And I had just done some, printed off some of the little add-on pages that she has in the colors that I thought this was calling for. And so when I got frustrated with this jewel, um, in the same little box I had, I have some some of these little filigree pieces, you know, some, some other things actually that a friend gifted me. And I was like, oh, that'd be pretty on there. And then um, I popped it on this piece of paper and it just kind of all fell together from there. And so what I'm planning on doing is putting this all together on here. Now notice I put a doily on here and that's not necessarily a bohemian style, but really anything weird and eclectic can be bohemian, right? So um, I really can do whatever I want. So I kind of layered this up and then it needed something else. And so I put this doily on it and then um, I had a large doily and I thought maybe I was going to put that on the back of it, but it looked too plain. But I laid it on that red piece of fabric and then I just traced the outline of it. So it has the scallops of the doily, but obviously it's not the doily. Okay, was it sticking to that? So I'm just going to start gluing this on and... It will be nice and flat when I put it on the front of the journal. So I already had this glued on and um, put onto this piece of paper here. And I didn't need to do anything to the back because obviously they're going to stack up. I'm not sure what I'm going to use those for in the journal, but, you know, it'll get there when it gets there, right? <laughs> How it always does. So if I can get this Fabri-Tac flowing, which I use for everything, by the way, because um, I don't like it when other glue gets too wet and it makes your papers, um, I'm probably putting way too much on here, it makes your papers warp and I can't stand that. It looks like the papers have been wet and that's because the glue is water-based. Um, and this is not water-based, so it doesn't do that. So, it's my favorite glue because of that. It looks really pretty. Love the way that is turning out. So, I'm just going to do the next layer. Just 
here. Maybe I won't put so much glue on here. I'll just run a couple of lines. And then put that on the doily. Let's see how I want to do that. Yeah. Make sure it gets on there. And you can see a little bit at the top and a little bit at the bottom. So I just lined up the scallops so that it would do that. I just got back from a cruise to the Bahamas and all kinds of things. My daughter's graduation um, and everything has been super crazy this year. It's getting ready to be July and I don't even know how that happened. And I feel like I haven't gotten to craft that much this year or I don't know. I've just been running and running all this time. And I just can't believe how quickly time has flown by. I don't know if you guys have experienced that. My daughter thought that the end of the year was never going to get here. She's had a couple of points where she just was struggling to make it through the end of the school year. Um, and it's just high school. It's not college. But, you know, they really really push kids these days and um it's a little stressful for them so once she got past exams um she was better but up until then gosh it it was kind of rough <laughs> so i'm glad it's over for her now and then we had to get her ready for her senior trip and um she's back come back and gone to the lake with her dad I got back from the Bahamas and Florida, um, and I could not wait to get back to work on something. While I was there, I came across this fabric, um, and I'll, sh I'll show you some more of the pieces here in a few minutes that I found. Um, they're not specialty fabrics or anything, but um, I just thought they were gorgeous. And so I put, um, I kept seeing like a theme when I was looking through the fabrics. And so I was like, oh gosh, I just, it's calling my name. <laughs> um, and so I grabbed several of them. And when I got home, obviously I could only get a few and I only got like a very small sample of them to bring home because I couldn't bear to leave them there. And then when I got home, um, I went and got larger pieces of it. I'm having a hard time seeing where this is going. Here we go. Um, and then I found some more at another fabric shop. And so I'm going to be putting, um, a fabric bundle together. I may, uh, I'll probably show it on Facebook first. In um, my favorite group that I'm in, which is Sheila's group, the group uh, Boho Daydreams, and um, I always like to let them have first dibs at stuff, and then whatever's left, I'll put it in my Etsy shop. And see how that goes but I'm really excited about it um, even even if it's just for me because <laughs> I just like it so okay so I kind of just put that right in the middle and that's what she looks like so far I don't know what it is. I could just look at these colors all day. It's just gorgeous. So I don't know what I'm going to do for the closure yet. Um, I may just tie or, or sew some sorry silk in here and let it have a, a bow tie. Um, I think that it just looks nice and flowy and it adds a softness to things. But um, So I'll show you. Let's see. 
Let me show you some of these fabrics real quick before we go on and before I forget. Um, I started out with some birds. And so I posted this in the group. And when I say the group, I mean Boho Daydreams. So don't let me confuse you. Um, everybody at Boho Daydreams loves peacocks. I don't know why we love peacocks so much, but they're um, just the thing. And so I found some peacock fabric. And here is a sample of that. It's really pretty. Picked up some feathers, two colors of those feathers. And then some peacock feathers. And I have, there's some more birds. Let's see. I got some roosters. And that might be all. That's more of the peacock fabric. There, I thought I had some more birds. I think I do. Yes, so. Flamingos. They're so cute for summer. And these little birds. These little blue birds. I thought they were sweet. So I think, um, I don't know if I'm going to do a bird bundle or, um, if I'll keep the peacocks separate. I did find some really pretty fabric, um, at the fabric shop peacock wise. Um, let me grab those sandals, sand, sandals, samples, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So, I went a little crazy on the samples. Um, here, that's the boho. So, here um, are some samples that I got for the peacocks in mind, having peacocks in mind. Now, these, a lot of these are upholstery material, but gosh, they are gorgeous. And so, they're thicker. Um, they're a little more pricey, but super gorgeous. That's the back, but I love that material. And this is insane. Um, I don't know what it is about, about this. It's kind of, um, plummy fuchsia, if that's a thing. Maybe it's more plum. That's the back of it. Gorgeous. And then here's some kind of goldy green and some blue and I thought that looked very peacocky and this is a um yeah it's showing up in the camera kind of a lime greeny and it just needed some green and this is really psychedelic and peacock looking um all these are upholstery fabrics they're a little bit on the thicker side and this is gorgeous. They had another, uh, this is really floppy. It's, um, it's really nice. It's, it's softer. It's not velvety, but it's kind I mean, it, it is velvety, but it's not velvet, I guess is what I mean to say. Um, and they had a couple of bolts of fabric that I couldn't get a sample on. The, um, tag on it said that it, they didn't allow any more samples on it. And one was a gorgeous purpley, kind of shimmery. And so, um, that's, this is going to be my next project, um, after the boho theme. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. I'm going to have to go scope out some more fabrics in another fabric shop as well. Um, so that's that. These other samples are not going to. I'm going to wait on those for a little bit. I can only do so many at a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I did find this cute little bird, too. So, that will go in the bird um, pack. And they they actually had a different peacock. 
um, at the at one fabric store versus the next and this one these are kind of coral pink and I thought they were really pretty um, and different even though I had this other flamingo I thought that they would go pretty good together how however that goes I don't know I don't know I just thought they were cool um, so that's to come and then here's the fabric that I picked up and started on so this is a really pretty paisley kind of distressed um, piece and I love the lotus flower in it I just thought that was gorgeous and it looks very boho to me that's more on the kind of green and aqua side that piece is and then I got some orange and I think I think that might be a lotus flower too I'm not sure um let's see let's move that out of the way there you go gorgeous some of these fabrics are a little thicker than others um, like this one is like super thick and heavy but man is it gorgeous look at that love that that fuchsia and that um, kind of coral orange color I love that together I've always loved those together my daughter thinks I'm crazy but <laughs> I just like it let's see and then here is um, this beautiful pattern I love that and this one is another distressed piece I just love that the way that they do that now makes it look old here is this one this is really cool I love the patterns in there like that flower look at that that's gorgeous and this is that red one that I was just working with with the blue in it oh, the Sun is trying to wreck my camera here so hopefully this will stay halfway decent this fabric I love that's another distressed type fabric the floral and this one is so pretty I think I'm getting ready to lose space here let's see move that out of the way and then I have three more so this is a red and it's gorgeous it's it's almost kind of canvasy um it looks kind of raw you know it has some imperfections in in the fabric and you can see the threads running through it linen-y type i don't know um but i had to have that that was super pretty oops can't fold this one is another distressed one this um was being discontinued uh, and I picked that one I had a there was a little more to that one that's actually a way really that's this kind of feels waxed um, I don't think it was an outdoor fabric but it definitely does feel waxy and this one is those pinks and yellows but it's very boho very distressed I just love that and so obviously all these colors don't um, don't go together but um, they all have the boho theme in common let's see what we look like here stacked up See, they look gorgeous together so you know you could do multiple projects with a bundle the bundle oops excuse me that I'm gonna put together for that and here's the 
Here's the other side of it. Really pretty. I don't have a good camera set up, so it's literally right in front of me. Just waiting to be knocked over. <laughs> okay. And all right, so back to the journal. Um, so you saw that one. Here's uh, Here are the pieces that I pulled together that I thought I might want to work with. And um, I've been envisioning some little tabs on the edges um, of the pages. And so I think that's what, isn't that gorgeous? Uh, I'm going to do with some of those. I love this one too. These are all from Sheila's um, packages that she puts together. I don't know. Um, I, I cut them up and use different pieces. Like sometimes I'll cut out just this gold or whatever. You can do so much with it. But they're really super pretty. Look how gorgeous that is. And she did a little lace package and that came out of there. That's this side. So here's, you know, some of the pieces that I might put in there. This one is gorgeous. That's one of her silks. Like she did some fat quarters of silks. Really, really boho. Very pretty. I've already used a piece of this. But there's an orange in case I need some contrast somewhere. I thought that one was really super gorgeous. It has the blue and the red in it. And this one I've had for a while. That came in one of her, I think one of the first bundles that I got from her. But I thought that was gorgeous. And then just some of that leftover that I was working with already. Um, okay, let me see if I can get all this out of the way. And see what we are going to do next. Oh, I guess I need that. I pulled some napkins too. I'm not exactly sure if I'm going to use them. Like I pulled some napkins, maybe for some tags or something. Um, and some book cover, some book covers, some book pages, just a few. And then I have some, I have a map book here that I want to take a page out of or parts of it out and put it on a page. Or make a fold out or something like that. And then one of these I thought would be cool. That's actually a tiger. In here you can't see it. But um, it's really cool when you can look at the light. Alright. So we would just start with, I don't know, this one. Let's see what we can do. I think I want to add some little tabs. I've cut, I cut all my pages down. Already I did that. It's been sitting here waiting on me. Um, so I've got, this is ink dyed, not ink dyed, it's ink sprayed paper. And then I put some botanicals on it and then sprayed it. So it just left the negative space impression of that. And then there's some coffee dyed paper. think that that's kind of blue this is some coffee dyed paper that I dried out on my deck and you can see the wood grain in there some tracing paper or onion paper I don't, it's hard to tell those apart and some more sprayed paper so the signatures aren't um, super thick you know I wanted to have some room in there to actually do something on these pages. Um, and I also have some stamps that I want to do something with. I found this at an estate sale. It's a box of, I mean, yeah, a box of stamps that I was shocked that there was this many in there. Because um, I was having a hard time finding stamps. One of the um, really nice people in another group was offering some Aus um, Austrian stamps. And so 
got some from her and then I found this. But so I'd seen some people do their own stamps with fabric and things like that. And uh, I think Annalie from Annalie's Journey journaling did some as well but i, I want to use the real stamps and maybe even put some fabric on the back of those um you can you could glue them you could sew them you know whatever you wanted to do so i do want to do some of that but right now i think some tabs are calling me so let's see what we want to do here I'm gonna do some red just for a little pop of color. And I usually sew these on, uh, and I'm leaving leaving this. Uh, it's about an inch, three quarters or an inch. I'm leaving it kind of raggedy. I don't like to worry about making things perfect. Uh, I'm sure you guys don't either. I usually start like in the middle here and so I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on it while we're here on camera and then um, I'll go and sew those up. So when we come back next time, they'll be sewed on. So just waiting on the glue here. A little bit there. And then when that glue is good and dry, it won't mess up your sewing machine also. But I like to get them placed. I kind of like instant gratification. And let's see how far out this is going to go. Make sure I got my placement. Oh, yeah. Here we go. So by the time this gets full and I get the three signatures in there, I'm hoping that uh, I've left this long enough to maybe stick out a little bit. If not, you'll be able to see it on the inside anyway. So I'm not going to stress about that too much. I'm not sure if I want to do all the same or different. So I'm just going to do different right now. Let's go right here. Love these little flowers. I got this new pair of scissors. My other scissors conked out on me. I probably just need to get them sharpened or something. But I don't know anybody who does that uh, yet. And so I went and bought this pair of scissors. Actually, I bought it online on Amazon. And they are just giant scissors. <laughs> I just can't barely cut with them because they're so heavy. All right, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of random... I like this one here because it kind of matches the color of the page. So let's see here. That's way too much glue. Put some on this side too. Somehow, I always get glue where it's not supposed to be. These um, fabrics really, you know, they have a shimmer to them. Some of them have all kinds of sparklies and sequins and jewels and this is a gold thread on this one, and it just really makes a huge difference. I'm going to pull that one in just a little bit more. Yeah, that one evened up a little bit. Oops, now it's falling out. I don't know what it is about these tabs that I like, but to me it just brings something extra without, you know, breaking the bank or having to 
stress yourself out about what you're going to put there. It just works. I'll skip that tracing paper and go here. Go up there. So let's see. This is like a two layered. It's like it was at the end of whatever it was. So I think I'm just going to do. I don't know. I'll cut it two layers. Maybe I'll use both. We'll see how it looks. It's definitely darker. And that makes it lighter. I like I think I like the darker. So I'm gonna glue this together. This is the only thing I hate about fiber tack. Look at that. <laughs> All that bubbling makes me nuts. I tried to put a piece of, I think I put painter's tape down in there because I saw somebody said that they put, put a piece of paper or something, I don't know, or the little um, thing that when you buy the glue, that there's that little covering over the hole. Um, they said that they just poke a little hole in that. And of course, you know, I couldn't poke just a little hole. I guess I poked a hole that was a little too big. And so the glue still bubbles out like that. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty. Obviously, I'm not putting it over on the front. I'm just measuring where I want it to be. So that's good there. Pretty. And then, um, let's see how many do I think I want to do. So I've got one, two, one, two, three, four more pages left. So I could do two and that would give it five, but I don't know that I want to put that many on here because I'm thinking... Maybe put three on here and three on there. And so that would make nine tabs all together. But it wouldn't be all just total tabs. Um, so I'm going to move that one to the side and start on this other one. Didn't that turn out really cool? I love how that turned out. And that was so easy to do too. Um... I haven't done the eco dyeing yet. It's very intimidating to think about doing that, but it looks fantastic when you're done. Um, I have a lot of, have seen a lot of people that have done it, and it just looks really gorgeous. What else do we got down here? I think I'm going to use this. Maybe. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Look how pretty that looks together. Oh, sometimes I just love looking at the colors together. So I'm going to go in a little bit here. Start in the middle there. All right. I think I'm going to take this piece off the end here because it's kind of raggedy. And just make my tab out of that. Eh, I think I'm going to leave it. Raggedy. Raggedy, raggedy. I think that's too long. Also, let's see. 
Mm, shucks. I can cut this off. Believe it or not, I will save that and use it. <laughs> I'm sure you guys probably do too. getting a little bit dark in here. The sun was coming through and it was throwing all these um, sunlight, the dappling and um, it was just crazy. So, okay, yeah, that's not too bad. All right. That one's not too bad. I put this book page in here by just adding some washi to hold those two together and popping it in there. Now probably, I'm not sure if I'll do something else to that or not because that's kind of um, inky or it looks like paint. So I'm not sure if I'm going to like that or not, but we will leave it for now and see. I think I'll do this page. I think I want some of this red. That's, how many layers is that? That's like three layers. Hmm. Maybe I'll double that up anyway. Let's see what that looks like. So, I don't know how much I'll get done today because I did take up a lot of time talking about fabric, but, um, oh yeah. Like I said, this will be done in parts, and hopefully I won't bore you to death. Since this is my first time, and I'm just kind of figuring this thing out. Need to be a little bit skinnier. Okay. Getting cloppy on there. Not sure here. Maybe I need to double this whole thing up. And I'm not sure if it's long enough. We just have to put it over to the edge closer, maybe. Get that off of there. When I was getting ready to do this video, my cat. Well, she's a kitten. I had some feathers that I'm going to use in this journal, and I kept laying them out, you know, so that I wouldn't forget to do something with them. And <laughs> every time I would put them up here, she would, I guess she smelled the bird. And they're fairly new. Like, I just found them outside my aunt in Florida. Her house um, is in a neighborhood and it backs up to another lady's yard and that lady has pigeons that, I guess they live there and they're always on her, the power line across from, or like that's parallel with the fence that lines their backyard and so she's always saying how many feathers that she picks up from out there. So when I was there, because that's where we went to go on this cruise, she lives four miles from the Kennedy Space. Well, not, she, she lives longer than that from the Kennedy Space Center. Not very long, but maybe four or five miles. And four miles to the Cape Canaveral port. And so when we left for our cruise, that's where we left out of. And um, 
So that's why I was in Florida. But So I went and I picked up some of those feathers out there and brought them home. So they're probably pretty fresh. And I bet my kitty still smells the birds on it. That's, I feel like I need something darker here. I already used red. Or maybe I need something lighter. Yes, there we go. Let's use that. I'm always so super indecisive about what to put where and things like that. And so I make my own self crazy. So I told myself before I started this video that I was going to have to have a plan because I couldn't just do like I usually do and sit around, tap my fingers and wait for inspiration to come or dig through all my stuff trying to think what I wanted to do next. <laughs> you guys might get really bored. Alright, which page was I doing? That one. Let's do this one. I'm just eyeballing this too. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm way too hard on myself on things and I'm trying to lighten up. I mean, I forget that they're junk journals and they're not, um, you know, perfect journals. And I've seen a lot of people, I watch YouTube quite a bit <clears throat> and I see a lot of people in their junk journals and I mean, some of them get crazy grungy and, um, some of them are what I call a white journal, which is no distressing on it whatsoever. That's what I call it. Um, you know, everybody's style is so different. So I'm trying to, like I said, go easier on myself and not think it has to look a certain way or somebody else's did, how somebody else's did or anything like that. Okay, I like those. That's kind of shimmery material. Oh, I love that that's coming out of there. That's awesome. When I did my first several junk journals, I was so paranoid about being perfect. And, um, oh gosh, look what I did, y'all. <laughs> I just totally lined them up together. <laughs> See what I mean? Like, I'm just a dork. Okay. Well, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that other signature and line those up here. <laughs> Maybe I'll just do two. So it looks like it was the plan all along. You guys won't tell anybody, will you? All right. So two. <laughs> and we have to see where they're going. So right here and right here. And I think I'm going to... Put just a little pencil mark there for like the middle. Oh, it would help if I would line it up. So I know where I'm going and I don't flub up again. There we go. Um, anyway, when I was um, doing my first couple junk journals, I thought everything had to be so perfect it took me like I don't know months to do one and I was thinking to myself how can this be that it takes this long to do this and then of course you know I've learned and through watching people and just talking to people that um you can do multiple things you can do them in bulk um you can do series or you can do kind of all your accessories first, your embellishing. So like your tags, um, anything that you plan on putting in there and then you kind of add that in. And so people have all kinds of different ways to do things and I just kind of had to figure out what worked for me. 
I have a hard time doing the embellishments or the, the ephemera. Sorry, I get on YouTube and I have no brain. I have no words. Um, it happens to me every time. Anyway, all the ephemera to put in. And then when I get to the point where I'm going to put it in, it doesn't fit or I've made too much or it doesn't make sense for where I'm trying to put it. And so I'm trying to ease into that and be a better planner, but it's not always working for me. I do have a, strangely enough, um, Christmas line planned, and I am planning to do that series. It's not um, anything other than Christmas, kind of vintage -y Christmas. And so I'm excited about doing that. I'm going to start, hopefully, in July, which is coming right up. Because you have to stay ahead of those things or else um, come Christmas time you have no journals made and you're just watching everybody else show their beautiful journals. So I want to make sure that I have mine done. Alright, what do I need to put here? Let's see what this is looking like. Oh, that is so pretty. Next to that, I love that. Put this on the back and see what else we need. So... Got red, red. Hmm. <laughs> I wish y'all could tell me. Ooh, this. Yes. That silk is going to be flimsy. Um, but that's going to be okay. There's the seam. Do I want to do a wider one? Probably not. Look through here. Oh, this is gorgeous. Sometimes I can't believe I cut this stuff up. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so now where am I going to go with this one? That's on the back. I think I need to add more papers in here. So I'm going to do that here. Right there. Where is that little line? Okay. Right there. If you'll notice, I'm putting these on the planer pieces of paper. So I'll probably put something else on there. Um, I don't know what yet. I try not to let my tabs interfere with any pockets or anything. I just kind of put right over it if I need to. You know, the tag is still hanging out. And sometimes I do more embellishment. I think I put that on backwards. On the little tab. That one's going to need to dry. Oh gosh. <laughs> Fabric tag gone wild. The other thing I hate about Fabric tag is it, it is tacky um, and it kind of sticks to your fingers. But it dries nice and fast. Look, I love that. Okay. Now let's see what we have here. Yes. Okay. That turned out nice. And so, put that in here and see what we are getting to look like here. Oh yeah, super pretty. I may come and do a couple right there. I think that would be good. So maybe right here. Oh, I think I'm going to do this 
orange and then I'm gonna do some of that let's make sure this orange ain't gonna look too crazy let's see oh no that's just gonna give it a nice pop if you hear some snorting my dog just walked up and it must be dinner time because she comes and stares me down and snorts and all kinds of things when it's dinner time to get my attention to make sure she gets fed. Oops, I'm out of camera here. I always keep saying out of camera. It's out of frame, Randy. Those are way too long to leave on there. I'm going to cut those off with my giant scissors. Oh, I love that orange. It's gorgeous. And that's like jewelry all in itself. Don't you wish life was so you could dress up and wear beautiful things like the Indians wear? <clears throat> These gorgeous saris and... I don't know the terminology. Sheila broke it down for me one time. I asked her. But I can't remember it because I'm not familiar enough with it. But um, people don't dress up anymore. Have you noticed? Like at all. We went, When we were on the cruise, it was formal night. And well, it, it was a short cruise. It was a four-day cruise. And so they don't really do a designated formal night but a lot of people choose to do that anyway and a lot of people didn't dress up on the formal night and I just think it's fun to dress up and do things like that my husband and I went out on our anniversary dinner last night and we went to eat um Japanese hibachi at the Japanese steakhouse. And there were people coming in there and... I don't know. Not that this is wrong or anything. You know, don't get me wrong. Um, tank tops and what looked like maybe they were in their swim trunks or whatever. And I was like, man, I just can't do it. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm older-ish. <laughs> And I just, I don't know. I, I like to look nice when I go out in public. So, I don't know. And of course it was the younger generation that was kind of not dressed up that I saw. Most of the people that I saw that were my age or older were dressed for dinner. I guess, you know, the Japanese steakhouse is not like it's a formal place, but I don't know. I'm just rambling. I just noticed that and thought how cool it would be if we had an excuse to dress up and use these beautiful fabrics and wear them somewhere. Okay, here we go. I really love that orange. Oh my gosh, I love the way that's turning out. So, strangely, we are almost at an hour, and I don't even know how that happened. And we got the tabs, I explained my cover, and we got the medallion on the front. So, I am going to say au revoir for now, and hope to see you soon. Uh, this will be number one in this junk journal uh, adventure. Thanks! Bye!